Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Scott Scher. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Transcriptions as well as Health Optimization Medicine and Practice. I'm also a board certified internal medicine physician. Hi, I'm Dr. Tadej Jacoso. I am the founder of Health Optimization Medicine and Practice. I am also the founder of Smarter and Harder, uh, makers of Transcriptions products. And so, Dr. Ted, today we're going to talk about something that we get a lot of questions about, which is polyethylene glycol, or PEG for short. There's concerns about it because of you know, various issues related to it that may or may not be true. We're going to talk about some of those. But I, before we get there, you know, why did we decide to use it in our products as a way to use our buckle trochies? Actually, before I answer that, I remember uh, because I, I wrote the code for our chatbot in the website, right? And there was this customer who was fighting with a bot about <laughs> polyethylene glycol. And you know, our bot was answering nicely. Of course. About, you know. Bots are much nicer than people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, based on the blogs that you've written yep. and then all of that. Sure. And it was doing answers. And the woman was still so mad, you know. No, that's not the way you use polyethylene glycol. But uh, anyway, I don't know why so many people are mad that uh, polyethylene glycol has been there for a very long time. Yes. It's one of the mainstays of compounding, right? If, especially if you want to control the absorption or the melting of something. Right. Uh, uh, and uh, especially that we use it uh, as a base for a buccal trochee. And we know that the buccal cavity has eight layers of mucosa in it. And then you put in... Um, uh, buckle turkey in there to melt, right? And so it has an opposition, and this opposition time actually determines how much the absorption will be. So under the tongue, sublingual yes. is actually just one layer of mucosa. Right. So the absorption is going to be out faster, and you're going to get a bump. So what you would like with uh, psychotropic agents, really, you know, those that reach your brain, you don't want a sudden spike of something, right? right? Well, for example, yeah. uh, for example, for products that contain caffeine and, and so on, you know, you want a slow ramp up right. and no crash, right? Right. So, and that's the reason why uh, I chose something like PEG because it's tried, tested, and true. The, the absorption rates are well established. Uh, it's been used forever and ever. You know, right. uh, yeah, it's just a safe ingredient. So yeah, it's, it's generally recognized as safe. It's a grass yeah, ingredient. Yeah. It's been around a long time. Yeah. And it also suspends all of the ingredients inside, you know, our ingredients in the trochies in a way that makes them so they're easily absorbable up here. Yeah. And so I do understand the issue because most people know PEG in like very high doses. Mm -hmm. Something like Miralax, for example, is a high dose, like 16 grams mm -hmm. of PEG. But what they don't actually correlate there is that what they're using that for is a laxative because all that PEG doesn't get outside of the GI system. Yeah. It actually just makes you have diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> they use it for colonoscopies, they use it for people that have chronic constipation. We're using a very, very small amount mm -hmm. of the PEG to suspend our ingredients, and it's not absorbable outside the GI system either. So what you're taking here, the ingredients are getting in, but the PEG is actually staying in the GI system and being pooped out eventually, just not, you know, not a huge amount. Well, what will actually be funny if you found out that the person who actually fought our chatbot actually used Miralax for constipation. <laughs> So this is the thing, right? People, there's always a spectrum here, right? Yeah. And I think that there's also some challenges because polyethylene glycol sounds like propylene glycol and ethylene glycol. And some of these are antifreeze and other- Antifreeze, <laughs> antifreeze. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so we are not putting antifreeze in our supplements, I promise you. Um, that's not what's in these products. And so we have to just kind of dispel some of these myths and these worries. And I, it's such a low amount. And like, yes, there are some people that do have an allergy to polyethylene glycol, but that's very, very rare. Mm -hmm. And you would know that probably before you took our products, I hope. Very easily to see on our ingredient packages. We're not hiding anything. Mm -hmm. In the end, it's a fantastic dosage form. It dissolves over 15 to 30 minutes. It doesn't give you a quick mm -hmm. spike, but it ramps up over about that 15 to 30 minutes. And it keeps all of our ingredients in that suspended form to make it easily absorbed. And it's very, very safe. And the other thing is that uh, you could see that the final product is scored. So it's uh, actually highly titratable. So you can cut it into four, take one fourth, see that's your dose. And even if you're too sensitive to one fourth, like for me sometimes, you know, um, I, I could get so sensitive that I have to do one eighth. Of your blue right? canopy. Well, my blue canopy, yeah, yeah. Right? right? So, so um, it, it actually is very convenient as a, as a dosage form. Yeah, I agree. So polyethylene glycol, otherwise known as PEG, we're using in very small amounts in our products. It's a safe ingredient. It's not absorbed outside the GI system. It absorbs very slowly up here, giving you max absorption for our ingredients. There's nothing to worry about. 